What's up, everybody? So Stipe Miocic was on the Jackson podcast with Rampage Jackson. And first, the episode overall is just very entertaining. It's good to finally hear from Stipe Miocic. He seems like he's been hiding under a rock or a cave for the past few years. And I've mentioned before here on my channel, this man has not fought since the Venom fight kits. It has been that long before I even really was hitting the ground running here with my channel. Like it wasn't even a thought when Stipe Miocic was around. That is how long it has been since Stipe Miocic has fought. And in this podcast, we're going to take a look at some different clips here. I, I got some timestamps here for us. And we're going to hear what Stipe Miocic has been hearing from the UFC because it's very clear the UFC is still stern on their where they're standing, that they want John Jones and Stipe Miocic next, which I have said before is just absolute blasphemy. It's ridiculous. This fight should not be taking place. We need to move on from this. He also... The, one of the answers that he gives almost kind of confirms what I was saying as well, which I believe John Jones and Stipe retire after they fight each other. I think that is the plan all along. And then we are going to get his thoughts as well when they ask him about he, what he thinks of the heavyweight division, its current status, and Tom Aspinall. So let's hop right into this. But, you know, I was thinking here I might have to turn the subtitles on when Stipe, when Stipe's talking, but I'm not going to do that because it pops up onto the screen. But Stipe's a great guy. He's very entertaining, and I like him. But come on, guys. Like, we're talking about John Jones his return taking place now in November. So, I mean, this is way overdue. This is getting ridiculous. But let's hear what Stipe uh, has to say when they ask him about uh, it, when he's going to be returning. You want to fight them. Is that the case? Yeah, I mean, I've been there, done that. You know I mean? Just, you know, there's one guy on the radar. That's it. Mm -hmm. And you just want that John Jones fight? Yep. And then after that, are you done? Oh, we'll see. I mean... I mean, I think I'm done after every fight since my first fight. <laughs> I mean, oh my so, God. like, that's funny, right? I mean, it's kind of funny, but, like, did you see how he kind of, like, looked? Am I just crazy there? Did he kind of have, like, a little look like, eh, well, I think it, it's like, oh, I'm on to it, man, with that theory a little bit. I feel like I feel like him and John are just going to dip out and retire after this. And they asked Stipe before this, like, hey, man, you know, um, yeah, like, you, you don't really have to fight any of the ranked guys or whatever. He's like, no, been there, done that, fight who I want, pretty much is what he said. I'm like, do I want to do this? I mean, then here I am again. Have they talked to you at all about when he could potentially be coming back? Yeah, they were talking about July, but that's past. So I'm thinking more maybe probably like November again in New York. Damn. That is probably going to be one of the craziest fights of all time. Yeah, I'm going to watch that one. Oh, yeah. One of the craziest fights of all time. Scott, dude, <laughs> they like Stipe, and Stipe is a friend of Rampage. And, you know, and, and it's great that they got Stipe out of, you know, out of, from under the rock to bring him on to an interview. It is not going to be one of the craziest fights of all time, right? Obviously, Stipe Miocic has done some incredible things inside the UFC, but come on, man. It's not one of the greatest fights of all time. And then let's move on here to uh, much later. It's kind of scattered uh, in this podcast, so I had to dig through and really kind of find these time codes because um, they, they asked him about John Jones early on and then a little later into the podcast. They talk more about his thoughts on the on, on the division, but uh, let's let's hear what he has to say about Tom Aspinall and the current like state of the heavyweight division. Which I mean, what else is he going to say? I guess if you're waiting in the wings and been waiting this long for a John fight, turn like we see the UFC is trying to figure out what to do with Tom. We see what's going on with John Jones. We see what's going on with you. We see that you don't care about anything except your game plan, which is you want to fight the best and you want to fight John Jones. What do you think the UFC has to do with Tom Aspinall now? No, I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> Tom's you know good champion, a great champion. He's tough. He's up and I mean, like not up and coming, but like you know, young and hungry. And I mean, yeah. I mean, we'll get to that road when I have to. But I want John Jones. And do you feel like the the interim belt? Do you feel like him just waiting on the sidelines and you, you getting that John Jones fight? Do you feel like he should still be fighting, or does it not even matter to you? I don't. Yeah, you know I mean, like I don't care about the title. I just want to fight John Jones. That's it. He just wants to fight John Jones, like. I get it. Like, that's what you want to do. Like, John and... See, here's the problem, guys. John Jones is the heavyweight champion. He's not like Nate Diaz or Conor McGregor without a belt or Jorge Masvidal, who, you know, is one of the bigger names in the sport, who they just kind of fight whoever and just get to put super fights together in this night. You are the champion. When you are holding the belt... There, there's a responsibility to that. And we have an interim champion and in Tom Aspinall who stepped up to the plate when John Jones was injured. And the, the, he had, you know, him and Stipe's fight fell apart for 295. They elevated Pineda versus Prohaska to the main event. Stipe 
or uh, Tom Aspinall versus Sergey Pavlovich stepped in on short notice to fight each other for an interim strap. That needs to be honored. I understand that Stipe Miocic wants to fight John Jones. Well, if that's the case, then like vacate the belt, fight a contender. Like I just don't understand how we can sit there and people can still pretend that this fight makes any type of sense. Like I understand Stipe is one of the greatest, if not the greatest credentialed heavyweight of all time. And John Jones is looked at as the GOAT and it's this big super fight everyone wants to say. It's ridiculous at this point. It's ridiculous in my opinion. Yeah, it can be just me and fighting. That's crazy. I think you would be the first one to beat him. You damn right, would be. I, I just feel like he, I just, I just feel like he might not have a chin, based off the way he fights, because mm -hmm. he makes it so hard for people to um, get in close enough to punch him. The, his whole style was putting his fingers in your eyes like this, yeah. and then kicking your your knee back and keeping you away from. Him. He keeps you at at, a, at his length where he wants. Yeah. And you're a taller guy. You got longer arms than than most people he fights and stuff like that. So I don't think he can do all that to you. Yeah, no, I 100% I think uh, also too is that you just don't let him dictate what he wants. Like there's any fighter, not just John Jones, any fight, don't let him dictate what they want to do because if you let them do what they want, that, that's the end of the road for you. You're fucked. So you get to hear it here. You know, you, you, what we're hearing in this interview to sum it up for you, I don't want to make a big, long video and keep you guys too long. My point is I want to get, get this, you know, I wanted to record this because, guys, I've been on my channel talking about this with John Jones and Stipe Miocic. The, the time is no longer, right? If they wanted to do this before, John wins the belt, they got this big fight, whatever, fine. You want to have Tom Aspinall fight another contender, whatever. But here we are. I mean, we're talking November like, John beat Seal Ghan, I believe it was UFC 285. They try to turn him around and get him on 295. He's hurt out. And now they're talking about a November return. Like, this is just, it's too inactive. The division can't move forward. And I don't understand why everybody is acting like we don't have an inter interim champion in Tom Aspinall. Like, these guys are dismissing Tom at all costs. I don't, this is not normal. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not normal. It just isn't. In the history of the UFC, when have we ever seen an interim champion ever treated the way Tom Aspinall is being treated? One, by the promotion, and then also by the by the competition inside the division. Like, I think if you ask Sergey Pavlovich, who just lost to Tom Aspinall, if he should be next in line, I bet Sergey Pavlovich would be like, yes, Tom Aspinall should be unifying the belt against John Jones next. Like, this is holding up the division. Having Tom Aspinall defender in an interim belt is ridiculous. They should have never put an interim belt on the line if this is what their intentions were going to be. This is just a major fumble, in my opinion, by the UFC. And I understand, I get it, the legacy, the this and that. John Jones has the heavyweight belt that he has been hoarding onto all of this time. We have a young champion in Tom Aspinall who wants to be active. Who, And again, like I said before, you let John Jones and Stipe go in there and fight each other, who knows? Maybe they both retire after the fight and then we have a vacated belt and what the hell do we do there? Well, now, now Tom Aspinall is the interim guy and I'll have to unify and this and that. Have Tom Aspinall fight John Jones. That's the fight that makes sense. And if John Jones doesn't want to fight anytime soon, Stipe Miocic, fight Tom Aspinall at UFC 304 in Manchester. You're coming out of the out of the woodworks here to do a podcast, right? It's the first time I feel like we've heard from Stipe in ages. Go fight Tom Aspinall at UFC 304. Winner, fight John Jones in November if John is not ready, whatever. That seems, in my opinion, maybe the best way to handle this. I don't know. That's just my opinion. I want to hear from you all down in the comments. Like this video. Comment your thoughts below. Subscribe to the channel. Help your boy out. I would appreciate it. See you next time.